The leading historians and philosophers of science have noticed precisely what you've described. In particular, that there was a, a rapid acceleration in knowledge and building up science in the 16th and 17th centuries under people like Galileo, Kepler, Newton, Clark Maxwell, and coming on up, uh, many others. And they also noticed that all of these people were actually believers in God, not all precisely the same theology, but all believing in a creator God. And that has been subject to a great deal of analysis. Uh, because you see, Richard Dawkins once complained to me, and he said, of course, they all believed in God, because everybody did in those days. And I pointed out to him that everybody didn't. And there was no development of abstract science in China, for example. And I also pointed out to him that this was researched by a, a brilliant chemist in, in Cambridge, who, who was a neo-Marxist and who wrote the definitive histories of Chinese technology. And he tried to explain this on the basis of Marxism, and he couldn't. And he eventually came to the conclusion, which C.S. Lewis came to, that the difference between the East, where you had technical invention like gunpowder and printing, but no abstract science, and the West was, that the East had no unified concept of a cosmos that had been created and had regularities built into it that we could describe as laws of nature. And C.S. Lewis has a wonderful statement summing up the work of Sir Alfred North Whitehead, who was a notable historian, philosopher of science. And he said, men became scientific because they expected law and nature and they expected law and nature because they believed in a legislator in other words far from um, faith in god being a hindrance to their science it was the, the motor that drove it so i think that's very important and you can drill down into that and see certain things first of all the notion of a creator led rapidly to the idea of an ordered universe and uh, finding order in the universe didn't surprise people who believed in uh, the fact that humans are made in the image of god so they're rational thinkers so to speak but then uh, taking that thesis further and a brilliant book has been written about this not so long ago by peter harrison who was for a time here in oxford as the professor of science and religion he said that an advance was made by the reformers who uh, looked at the universe from a biblical perspective and decided that the biblical worldview was of a contingent universe that is god could make it any way he liked so if you want to find out you've got to go and look at it and the big transition from the ancient way of thinking which was you make up your mind what the universe is going to be like and you impose that on it. So, for example, for centuries, people thought that all planetary and stellar motion was in circles until you get to Kepler, who decided not to follow Aristotle, but to go and look. And he came up very rapidly through accurate observations with the fact that they moved in ellipses. Now, that's a that's a seismic shift. So those two things, the doctrine of creation and the doctrine of contingency, made a fundamental seminal contribution to the rise of modern science as we know it. 